What is up YouTube fragrance family? Tommy with Studio Sins here. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite fragrant notes in men's fragrance and likely one of the most popular fragrant notes in men's fragrance and that is tobacco based fragrances. Basically for the next two days I'm going to introduce you guys or reintroduce you guys to two types of tobacco fragrances. Today we're gonna to be focusing on those very popular, a little bit heavier and tomorrow we're gonna to be taking a look at some lighter or more medium tobacco based fragrances. So when we come back, we're going to get started with 10 of my favorite popular tobacco based fragrances for men. That and more is coming up. So stay tuned. Welcome back everyone. Now today we're talking about arguably one of the most popular men's fragrance notes in men's fragrance and that is the note of tobacco. Featured in today's video and also listed in the notes below are 10 of my favorite popular men's fragrances that feature the note of tobacco. Of course this is going to be either as a primary note or as a subsidiary of the actual fragrance olfactive sense itself basically tobacco is what you're getting in these fragrances and i've actually kind of mixed and matched designer with niche the very first fragrance happens to be a niche fragrance from the very popular niche house parfums de marley it is Herod. Herod quickly became a very popular tobacco based fragrance. A lot of niche fragrances kind of sacrifice the larger audience. They're not necessarily always crowd pleasing or mass appealing. This particular fragrance definitely is as a tobacco based fragrance. It's extremely accessible, kind of a medium to light tobacco in tonality. It opens with a spicy cinnamon aroma chemical called pepperwood. In the heart, you have some floral notes that lend a light textured quality. You've got osmanthus, you've got cystus. Also a little bit darker notes such as frankincense in the heart. You've got vanilla, cedarwood, vetiver, cypriol, patchouli, and a little bit of a musk in the base to give it some density and some weight as well. As the niche fragrance, one of the most accessible niche fragrances out there in terms of tobacco, and it's just absolutely lovely to wear. And again, one of my favorites. Parfum de Marley's Herod. If you want to smell like tobacco and if you don't want to be mistaken for any other fragrant note, men's fragrance, this is the one to wear. It is by the house of Mancera. It is red tobacco. This is an extremely powerful tobacco fragrance. Back in the 80s and 90s when shopping malls were extremely popular, in our shopping mall we had a tobacco shop. And I remember going in there several times uh, with my father because he had a pipe that he would smoke sometimes to get tobacco. And I just loved that smell. And that's what red tobacco tobacco kind of reminds me of is going into a, a men's tobacco shop because it's just got that really staunch, unmistakable, crisp, realistic tobacco smell. And that's what makes Mancera's red tobacco extremely popular today. It's also a definitive shopping list of all those prolific notes that end up in the darker, richer, more powerfully projecting fragrances like nutmeg, frankincense, there's a little bit of apple in here, there's saffron, there's of course patchouli, definitely well worth the price. It's actually really inexpensive, Mancera's red tobacco. Our next tobacco fragrance is one of the more, again, popular tobacco fragrances. Similar to Herod and red tobacco, it is a niche fragrance. It is Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. Just like the name implies, this is a spicy combination of tobacco and then the lighter, sweeter, creamier note of vanilla. But don't get me wrong, this fragrance Fragrance is all deep, dark, dense, and rich. It is one of the more denser in terms of tonality. It's a heavy tobacco fragrance. What a lot of people love about Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille is there's this dense, almost raw richness of tobacco in the base, but it's married with an extremely lovely vanilla note. And that's kind of, again, it's all in the name itself. You've got tree sap, you've got cacao. There's some dried fruits in there that lend a little bit of credibility to the contrast. It's kind of what's great about the fragrance. Similar to red tobacco, it's not one of those that you're gonna wear on a daily basis. It's very, very refined. Although it is very versatile, it's gonna be more for those highly refined kind of upscale or dressed up activities. Again, in my opinion and many others, one of the best niche tobacco fragrances out there, Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. Our next tobacco fragrance happens to be another niche fragrance and it sounds like I'm focusing mainly on niche, but I'm just kind of getting the heavy hitters out of the way. Probably my absolute all-time favorite combination of honey and tobacco because you'll notice that honey and tobacco are an absolute wonderful 
pear wonder twin powers activate in fragrance and the fragrance to which i'm referring is by zerjoff it is naxos 1861. Uh, naxos is the epitome of the ultimate pairing of tobacco and honey it to me is everything that you want in a fantastic lightly this again in terms of tonality this wouldn't be a darker richer resinous tobacco this would be kind of a medium to light tobacco similar to tom ford's tobacco vanille where you've got tobacco and vanilla this tobacco and honey pairing is that sweet smooth almost melodic combination it opens with bergamot lemon and lavender is kind of a light introduction into the arena of tobacco honey cinnamon and cashmere are in the heart then you've got your tobacco your sweeter tonka bean and vanilla in the base it's just an amazing blend if you've not experienced zerjoff naxos 1861 i highly recommend at least getting a sample love it it's definitely worth every penny the samples aren't super expensive go to a nice decant website get yourself a little bit of a, a decant or a sample and try it out you won't regret it naxos 1861 by Zerjoff. Diving into some designer fragrances now that are really great in my estimation, and this one is definitely an underrated gem. It is by Jesus Del Pozo. It is Tobacco Wood Nights. Tobacco Wood Nights is kind of an underdog of a tobacco fragrance. It's not one that's supremely popular. It's growing in popularity due to its aromatic nature. This one makes use of nutmeg, clove, leather, and lavender as supportive notes to the primary tobacco note in the fragrance, and it's a very hyper versatile kind of tobacco what i love about it though is it's not super sweet kind of a, in a midline middle distance in terms of sweetness so if you don't like a lot of sweet you know if you don't want a swisher sweet kind of tobacco fragrance or flavor tobacco wood nights is a perfect go-to. It's great for date nights. In terms of hyper versatility, you can wear it every day, every occasion. Uh, it doesn't kind of pigeonhole itself or either dressed up or casual. In terms of just about everything, it's riding that fine line and it's extremely inexpensive. Tobacco Wood Nights by J. Del Pozo. One of my favorite tobacco fragrances and one of the more accessible fragrances out there and they're still thankfully producing it. It's by Terry Mugler. It is Pure Havan. Pure Havan is a Another mix of honey and tobacco that is just so great. Well, some people say they get a sense of cherry in the background. I don't personally get that in Pure Havan, but I can see where you would get that from. What I believe it is, is the labdanum and styrax, which are the fixatives, you know, that the kind of sticky sweetness that is in the base of Pure Havan. When you combine that with amber, uh, cacao, vanilla, patchouli, honey, it crosses that saturation point where it smells like cherry. In terms of tonality, it's riding that fine line. It doesn't quite go into the territory of that darker, heavier tobacco-based fragrances like some of the earlier ones that I've mentioned. And again, it's something you can run out and get even today. And I've got it linked down in the notes below if you're interested in picking yourself up a bottle. Get it while you can before it gets discontinued because that seems to be the way some of these these really popular Mugler fragrances, Pure Havan. Spice Bomb Extreme. Whether you have Spice Bomb, Spice Bomb Extreme, Spice Bomb Infrared, those are the three primary tobacco-based scents out of the line. And that's what I really love about Spice Bomb Extreme, is that tobacco note is there immediately. Along with cinnamon, saffron, black pepper, amber, you've got your vanilla in there as well, as there's such great supportive notes to that note of tobacco. But again, primarily what you're getting in Spice Bomb Extreme, along with that, the spices in the very epicenter is that tobacco note. The performance is excellent, fantastic sillage trail projection is great with this one, and that's why it's so popular. Spice Bomb Extreme by Victor and Rolf. Another extremely popular tobacco-based fragrance I think people often forget is actually tobacco-based. It is the One Eau de Parfum by Dolce & Gabbana. Now, if you've ever worn this fragrance and you're like, I don't know why I like this so much. I'm just so supremely attracted to it. It's likely that tobacco that creates that rich juxtaposition in the notes. This is when tobacco crosses into that threshold or territory of seductive. There's something supremely sexy and magnetic about the one's DNA and thus this why it's been touted as the best date night fragrance for many years, and I still think it kind of holds that position. You also have coriander, ginger, cardamom, your patchouli there. A good bit of amber, you've got some nice cedar and other woods in the background. The one is just, there's literally nothing that I don't like about this fragrance. The Eau de Parfum definitely is aces in my book and in many others. The One Eau de Parfum by Dolce & Gabbana. 
there are a few fragrances in this list that can be quite costly. Of course, niche fragrances are often associated with higher costs. Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille, Naxos 1861, Parfume de Marley's Herod. None of these are cheap, but they're definitely in my book. If you're going to be paying a higher price for a niche fragrance, these are the ones that are actually worth every penny. However, it's not impossible to find a tobacco fragrance and a cheap designer fragrance that's going to be really good quality as well, or extremely accessible, extremely wearable on a daily basis. This is one of them from the House of Zara in their tobacco collection. It is rich, warm, and addictive, or RWA as I often call it to abbreviate it. This one is a really nice quality fragrance for being a cheap designer scent, and Zara I think has done a, a great job in the entire tobacco collection line. This is one of the more popular. I think this falls into the category of seductive tobacco scent similar to the one, Eau de Parfum. Kind of has that sexy, warm, sensual, magnetic quality about it. Again, another pairing of honey and tobacco. This one also makes really good use of a supportive note of coconut along with sandalwood and cedar. Rich, warm, and addictive is one of those tobacco fragrances that you could just actually take a bath in. It smells so good. It's got really good performance. This one you don't have to worry about spraying too much on though. Feel free to spray as much of rich, warm, and addictive on as you want. This is the kind of scent that only goes so far. Historically, I get good performance out of this fragrance, but again, it's one of those you don't have to worry over much about spraying too much on. Rich, Warm, and Addictive by Zara. Our last tobacco scent that is among my favorite popular tobacco scents for men is one that many people love for its extreme versatility and cheapness. Very inexpensive, very economical, very affordable, all of the above adjectives. It is from Calvin Klein and it is CK1 Shock. CK1 Shock is arguably the best, cheapest tobacco fragrance out there just because it's such a great combination of supportive notes. You ever been at a concert and the lead man of the band or the singer crowd dives, everybody's holding them up up and you know walking them through the crowd or back onto the stage that's kind of what the supportive notes are doing in CK1 Shock. So you've got tobacco as your primary note. You've got black basil, black pepper, cardamom. There's a good bit of cashmere in, in the base, something called ambrane that adds to the richness, the resinous quality. Patchouli, tobacco, and a white musk that adds some density and weight as well. It's got kind of a youthful vibe to it. I'm not saying that if you're 30 or above, you can't wear this fragrance because I don't believe in ageism in fragrance, but it does have a really nice, youthful, energetic vibe to it or quality to it and I think a lot of people's first foray into the kind of the arena of tobacco based fragrances and that's one reason it's so popular CK1 Shock by Calvin Klein. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and some of my favorite popular tobacco based fragrances and if I've accidentally omitted your favorite apologies for that. I know there are a ton of fragrances out there that feature the note of tobacco and these are just some. If you've got experience with any of these fragrances, let me know what your experience is like and let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite tobacco based fragrances are as well, whether they're in this list or it's a brand new fragrance that I haven't covered. Thanks so much for stopping by though and checking out today's list video and as always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense and I'll see you tomorrow.